Okay guys, so here's a few more of my notes from my hieroglyphic notebook. Um, at the top you see the hieroglyphs for Reki M Ibi, and I've given another video of that, which is a prayer. It's all about knowing what's in your heart, knowing yourself. Kind of like, to thine own self be true, know what is in your heart, what brings you joy, and do that thing. And then you can see <clears throat> the uh, rectangle with the two loaves of bread and what looks like a little Jesus fish and three hash marks. That is shet i tu, and it means writings. I know what is in my heart. I know myself. Then you look down to the next line of hieroglyphs. You've got the little D mitten, the uh, U quail chick, and some other weird little thing. I don't know. That's shedu, and it means to educate, which is what I'm trying to do for you. Educate. Shedu. And there's again the Rekiem Ibi with the hieroglyphs R, the K, circle with the lines, the little seed man, the owl, the heart. Yeah, let's just have it there a couple of times because it's a really important saying. Rekiem Ibi. I know what is in my heart. And then at the bottom, you have the double uh, helix, the uh, twisted flax, flanking a circle with a dot in it. And that is nehe. And it, it means either millions of years or forever or something like that. A long, long time. Nehe. The way it's been, the way it will always be, the way it will continue to be. Nehe. Now this page, this page is super important because you will come across all of these in hieroglyphs. If you see the reed leaf followed by the quail chick, that is you, you, and it means is or to be. So, like, the king is doing that. The king is purified. The king is, you know, whatever. It'll be you. So, uh, like the king, yeah, king, you wab is, uh, he is purified. But you is is or to be. Anyway, the next one there, you've got the little loaf of bread with the wavy lines, and you'll see that pretty often too. And that is ten, and it means this. Usually for feminine things, this. Ten. If you see three of the wavy lines, that is nen in, and that means those. Those things. This, those, you know. Ten is this, nen, nen is those. If you see a square over the wavy lines, that is pen. And that means this, but for a male. And if you see pen followed by the viper, that is pen f. And f, f is uh, things to do with masculinity, he, his, him, uh, so this, his things, he, he is, well, anyway, male, F, pen F. Okay, now if you see the little um, saucer there, the K, that looks like um, neb, but with a handle, that is uh, the K followed by two reed leaves, that is key, key, and that means another, for male, another, ne, um, another. Now the female version of that would be the K um, saucer there with the handle followed by the loaf of bread and that would be ket because all female things end in T. Ket, another. If you see the wavy lines followed by the viper that is NF and that means to himself. Uh, the foot, the profile of the foot followed by the quail chick is BU, BU. And that means place, place, place the offerings, or in this place, in this place. If you see uh, the circle with the parallel lines followed by the loaf of bread T, that is chet, and that means thing. And then at the very bottom in that tiny script you can see uhim ach, which means to live again, a reincarnation. 
If you see the quail chick followed by the rectangle that is SH sound and then a foot, that is Usheb and it means answer. The door bolt followed by a seated male figure is Ze, which is the man. Ze, the man. If you see a door bolt followed by a loaf of bread T, that is Zet. There's probably a little lady, a picture of a lady seated there. Zet, the woman. And we've already gone over the other one, Jet. It's always good to know, though. Jet, it means eternity. At the top, you'll see H M W T. So you know that would be the H symbol. It could be the courtyard. It could be, uh, and then the owl, and then the quail chick, and a little loaf of bread. That is Himud, wives. Himud. Uh, the the viper, followed by the wavy line, and then the um, mitten would be fiend, and that means nose. If you see just seated people, that is the retu, the people. The wavy line with the M, owl, and the eyeball for ouser is nem, and it means to sleep, to slumber. If you see the wavy line in the H courtyard, the profile of the vulture followed by the candy cane, that is nehas, nehas, and that means wakefulness. I think I've already done this one, you, the reed leaf and the quail chick, you to be, but it's a good one to always know, you. Snehas, snehas, sen. Sinhas. That is uh, wakefulness, watchfulness, alertness. And if you see the cobra followed by the mitten, that is Jed. Jed, to speak or say. Jed, like Jedi Medu. Words to be spoken by. Jedi Medu Ein. Words to be spoken by. Jedi Medu, Jed, to speak. And if you see the little, um, a symbol for the pottery stand, the jar stand, that is G, followed by the oval R, that is Ger, Ger, and it means to be silent. The oval R, followed by a circle with parallel lines in it, is Rech, so Rech, and that means to know, knowledge, Rech, knowledge, Rech. In the little hieroglyphs there, you can see the candy cane, the horned viper, uh, the CH circle with the lines in it, some hash marks, little bird, oval R for the mouth, and an uh, arm doing something. That is Tsefech Bara. The circle with the lines in it followed by the owl staring at you, and two arms with palms up, like when we shrug, I don't know, I don't know, when we shrug with our arms open and our palms up, I don't know, that's exactly what that means, I don't know, chem, 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 it can also be uh, the wavy line and the R with uh, the R oval and the circle with the lines in it for KH, which is nirech, to not know. <clears throat> and then you have the oval R with the wavy line N, which is Ren. And when you see that, when you see R, N, the oval and the wavy Charlie Brown line, that is Ren. It means name. Name. Ren. Uh, there was a some TV show about a mermaid on a couple years ago, and that was her name, was Ren, and that's the name they gave her, Ren, because in ancient Egypt, that's what that means, Ren, name. And then, uh, if you come across the the G, the owl, uh, the reed leaf, and the loaf of bread, that is gimit, and that means found. The G water stand, followed by the owl, and the quail chick means weakness, gemu, weakness. The G followed by the candy cane, guess, means to anoint with ointment. 
If you see the twisted rope, or double helix, whatever you want to call it, and the Charlie Brown wavy line and the arm with the with the hand, that is henne, henne, and it means together with. Then you can see some hieroglyphs in the little tiny drawing there. There's a, a big, um, looks like a perfume jar, then the owl M, the T loaf of bread, the nefer sign, and the horned viper F or V, followed by an R oval. That is kunumit nefer, which means good association or divine association. Now it's kind of interesting, the letters can also be prepositions sometimes. If they're not spelling words with other symbols, then they may be prepositions, like the N Charlie Brown wavy line can also be two or four. So this person is doing this for the god, or he's doing this to the Syrians, or whatever. So yeah, it can be a preposition. And the M, owl, is the same. It can also be in, from, or as the preposition, the owl. If it's just dangling and not spelling a word, that's what that is. It's a preposition. And then finally, underneath that uh, seated lion, you can see the symbol for amentet, which is in the west, where we go and we die, amenta. And that's three of the little tea breads, except the first one has a big plume, some kind of feathery thing coming out of the top and two lines dripping out of the bottom and then kind of like the Aket base uh, under it so you have Amentet and here we've got uh, Ein, Ein. I, I covered that on another video I think the reed leaf followed by the wavy line or the uh, red crown and a reed leaf that is Ein which means by, words to be spoken by, ein, ein. And sometimes the reed leaf is omitted, they just have the wavy line, so you just have to know that that's what they're saying, ein, by. Anyway, uh, the circle with the parallel lines, the ke, ke sound, followed by the oval R, that is ker, ker, and it means with or near. So this shows approximation in relation to other things. Ker. So, it places the offerings near this, or uh, that temple is near that thing, or whatever. Ker. With. Near. And then uh, neti. 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 Uh, the wavy line N, the bread T, and the double hash mark. Niti, and it means which. That's a relative pronoun. Which, which, which thing is which. Then you have ket, um, which means thing. So you could actually have neti ket, which means which thing. Uh, ket is thing, matter, property. And that's the kh circle with the lines, the t bread over a little uh, scroll thing or something. Uh, uh, Kit, kit, kit. And I've already done that. Geru, we covered that. That's the silent man. Geru. Anything with ger is going to be quiet. Ger, nighttime. Gere, you know, ger, nighttime is quiet. Geru is the quiet man. And isn't that funny that that cartoon guy uh, is Gru. Gru, Geru, the silent man. Geru. Anyway. So, for those of you who enjoy a little red wine or a little white wine, this next one's fun. It is irp, and it means wine. You'll either see that little symbol of the uh, grapes hanging on the vine over little support sticks, or you will see just the irp, the I reed leaf, the oval R, and the P square, irp. And then hanket is the one for beer. And you see that, it's right under the word beer there at the very bottom. It's the double helix, uh, twi twisted flax thing. Then the K from the eroded hill. And the T from the loaf of bread. Heket, hanket. And it'll be a little jar. You'll see the jar for the beer. And then the brew house is the uh, ot hanket. 
And then on the side margin, I don't know if you can see it, but you got to turn your head. It says, Rack in ech tech ef, which is, you knew he was drunk. Rack in ech tech ef, because rack is to know, right? Rack in ech tech ef. You knew he was drunk. So anyway, there's a couple more little notes out of my journal. Oh yeah, and then these last two, I just got to throw these in, because these ones are super important. When you see, um, I think it's like three or four little vases stuck together, that is henti, and it means in front of. And you will see this a lot, because people go in front of the gods at judgment time, or they go in front of Osiris. So when you see the little jugs all strapped together, that is henti, in front of. And of course, if you have in front of, you must also have behind. So behind are the three flowers coming out of something that looks like the loaf of bread. And that is ha-a, and that means behind. This is another M. This is another M you'll see, and it actually looks like an M. It might be where we get our M, for all I know. Who knows? So this would... Uh, this would be common when you see Ramsey's name. They use this style yeah, M. Here you'll see that little M in in Ramsey's cartouche. You see, uh, we have um, Ra, Ra, M, Se, Ra, M, Se, Ramses, King, Sutton. And then again here, Ra, M. And here they've used the door bolt Z's for his ses. So ra im zez. Ra im zez. Beloved of Amun. Here again, ra im se. So, yeah, just be on the lookout for that. That's an M. I've shown you guys before. This is Neb Taui. Neb Taui, the lord of the two lands of Egypt. Nib Taui. Um, what does it say? It's talking about Hathor. It says Het Heru, the house of Heru, atop Heritep, uh, Waset Niut, the town of Waset, the goddess. Oh, the goddess. Okay, so it's saying Hathor is is the 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 goddess of this town of Waset. Yeah, coming back to this one of Hathor. It's uh, Hathor, Heritep, Waset, Niut. So she's the goddess of this town. Uh, but here, there, she, she's in front of Osiris. Remember, Hanti, in front of, in front of Osiris. And Mementa. Amentet, there's a menta right there, the three T's and the little hillside. Given life, endurance, and dominion, power, the Lord, healthy, Seneb, healthy Lord, happy Lord, joyful Lord, Awi Ibet, see they put a T because it's a lady, Awi Ibet, the Lord uh, behind. Uh, ze, ze, behind the man, behind the man, a lord like yeah, You Ra. just start to see it, and, and even if you don't get it all, gee whiz, knowing some of it is a big relief, and you can kind of guess what they're saying, you know, you just kind of work through the things that you do recognize, and figure out what it is they're trying to say, and in the context of why they're saying it, where it's being said, you can kind of piece things together. Just don't let it get you down that you don't know every single word and symbol, because there's just too many. I mean, it's a whole new language. But you start to see the patterns, and you start seeing similar words again and again, like great, and lord, and given, and words and the names of the gods and on top of this and that and so you start to see it really you start to see it more than you don't see it which is where you started out right right anyway i hope that helps okay guys be well